So you got a brand new Mac for Christmas, now what? All right, hi, I'm Doc, and I'm gonna show you some applications that you should pretty much install on any Mac. Of course, these are my recommendations, and there are others I can add to this list, but these are the basics, and this explanation is going out to my buddy Aldora, who posed the question, hey, rather than just tell me what those apps are, explain a little bit about them. So here it goes. First and foremost, you need Chrome. Chrome is just a better browser. I do use Safari, but I also like Chrome. So get Chrome is just faster, smoother, and if you're really tied into the Googleverse, like you use a Gmail account and you have Google Drive, Google Docs and that, it just seems to work better. So go ahead and get Chrome, and you can find that by just searching Google Chrome. Okay, the next one, Dropbox. If you use a free account, Dropbox will allow you two gigs of online storage. Basically, what I do with Dropbox, and I use a pro account, which is 100 bucks a year, but I get 100 gigs of online storage. I use that to replace my documents folder. So that way, all the documents on this computer, as well as my computer at the office, my iPad, my iPhone, and any other computer I might use, all of them share a sort of my documents folder. What's really cool about that, if I was to go to someone's house, like say I go to my friend Aldora's house, and I need a file that is in my Dropbox, I could just log into the web interface, which you see right here, and I can get access to those files. Next, Crash Plan. I use Crash Plan. I also just started testing out Backblaze, which is this guy. Oops, let's get there, which is this guy. But Crash Plan allows you an online backup of your computer. The worst thing I get as a computer guy, people come to me with tears in their face, say they lost all their data. Crash Plan will automatically back up all your data to the cloud and it's very secure it encrypts it before it actually leaves your computer so not even the people that crash plan can open it what's really great about crash plan it also allows you to say have a friend who has a uh, computer on the other side of the island in my case city in your case you can also share backups meaning my external drive can back up my other friends computer from across town and vice versa so should they have a problem they could just drive over pick up the drive take it home plug it in and be back and running um, Backblaze is a good competitor to, to this and I like Backblaze because it was written by a bunch of ex Apple guys like myself so I'm just starting to test out Backblaze, but either one of the main thing is back your stuff up. Not just the one in your desk, because if someone were to come in and steal that drive, or in, like here in Hawaii, you were to have a flood or a tsunami, you would lose your backup drive and everything is gone. So it's good to have a backup on the table, but also have a backup online. My two favorites are Crash Plan and Backblaze. Next, Text Expander. Text Expander is one of my favorite apps. And rather than tell you what it does, I guess I'll explain it to you. Let's say I'm making a YouTube video and I need to put my signature. Rather than type out a long thing, I just go comma, comma, YT, and it automatically fills it out for me. So what Text Expander does is it allows you to take a bunch of snippets or shortcut codes that will then fill in the text for you. And it can do things like fill in form documents. Uh, you know, I've even sent like four page follow up letters with about six letters to trigger that code. So once again, that's Text Expander. Now, Fantastical. Fantastical is one of my favorite apps. It basically allows natural language input into your calendar. So you see here where it says lunch with John at 123 Main Street on Thursday. By typing that, it automatically fills out what is an otherwise pain in the butt to fill out your calendar. It syncs really, really well with your Google calendars and your Apple calendars, and it is also available as an iOS app. So I actually love that. By the way, before I go further, Chrome iOS app, Dropbox iOS app, Crash Plan iOS app, Text Expander Touch iOS app, FlexiBits, Fantastical, also iOS app. You see where I'm going here? I like these things that work together. Now, Evernote is my favorite app ever. This funny. This is designed to help you not forget anything. You can paste clips from the web. You can type notes in directly. You can take photos. You can leave audio messages or audio notes to yourself. If you're a person who likes to just have your notes in a really, really handy place, Evernote is one of the best. And again, works on the Mac, works on the PC, Android, Blackberry, and iOS. A very, very awesome app. I just get it. It's totally free, although they do have a premium account, which I subscribe to. One of my favorite things about Evernote is you can buy what's known as an Evernote Moleskina. So if you're like me and you like to handwrite notes, you can then take pictures of those notes and it will OCR or optically read that note, allow you to search it later. Once again, hands down, Evernote, whole show in itself. Go get it. It's free. Now, another favorite of mine is Codebook. Codebook, also available for the iPhone, as you can see here. 
basically is an automatic address book. Uh, hard to explain this. I'm going to pick on my friend Aldora again. I can go and type in her name. Say I only know her email address. I can put in her email address and it will search and get me her Twitter and Facebook account if they're publicly available. So I can get all the other details I need for a person just by knowing one small portion of their information and provided they've left that open to absorbing from the net. So it's kind of neat because it's a really smart address book. Once again, it's free. Go download it. Try it. See how you like it. When I was doing this, I had mentioned LaunchBar. Let me move these in order. LaunchBar is my favorite little launcher here, and it just allows you to access applications really quickly. But LaunchBar is a little nerdy, so I'm going to give you an easier one. I love LaunchBar, and I can show you what to do with it, but I'm going to show you Alfred. Alfred, Light LaunchBar, is a quick launcher, and this guy is free, although they do have a bonus pack. Alfred is cool. You double-click it, and you type in photo. You can see I have Photoshop. Um, I could search things on the web, like say I want to buy a new battery. I can search for it on the web, search it in Amazon, look it up in Wikipedia, things like that. So again, it's just a quick launcher, which allows you to find all your applications, search files, a whole bunch of other cool things, and try Alfred for free. Again, I'm a little bit more nerdy, so I like LaunchBar because it's just more programmable, scriptable, and extensible. That may be complicated, so we're going to skip that. Now, two I forgot to mention in my list, but I'll add, day one is a nice journal. Again, it's also an iOS app. Day one is just a place for you to store your personal history. I use it as a journal. I like to keep notes to myself, um, kind of talk about my day. I do a lot of my writing in it. And what's really neat is using a couple of the services, I have it automatically pull my Instagrams and store them in there as well. So day one journal, one of my favorite apps that you should try. And lastly, but not least, Here's Bartender for the Mac. In this case, I forgot to add it to this Mac, and I'm going to add it now, but I'll show you. Bartender will get this long list of things you have running across your menu bar and make them go away by allowing you to hide them really quickly, and you end up with a small bar like this. So instead of one that shoots all the way across your screen, you can make it smaller by using something like Bartender. I know that was really fast. And I hope this helps. Again, these are some of my favorite apps that you pretty much must have for any brand new Mac. All of which are free with the exception of Crash Plan and Backblaze, their monthly services because, well, you're storing your files in your computer. And Text Expander comes in at about 35 bucks. But what's really neat about Text Expander is it will show you how much time you save in typing. So it's well worth the 34 bucks. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please send them to me, and please hit the subscribe button in the top, like button in the bottom, and I hope you enjoy your brand new Mac, these new apps, and these videos. I'm Doc Rock. Once again, happy holidays.